Greetings Wildcat fans, I'm Marvin James and this is the Fort Valley State University Coaches Show featuring head coach Don Pittman. Coach, not the outcome we expected this weekend or wanted in Tuskegee, but definitely a great battle with the Tigers out there. Uh, yes, Marvin, it was a great game. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, give the team, uh, the student athletes, a big hand because they overcame a, a number of challenges. Uh, number one, we most definitely not playing on the same level field uh, as Tuskegee. Tuskegee has uh, 36 scholarships. We have 20. Mm -hmm. They have eight full-time coaches. We have three, including myself. And um, they have two trainers, and we only have one trainer. Uh, so they have a number of things uh, to their advantage. Uh, and also, they uh, have scholarships in the summer. Their whole team is there for the summer, so they are stronger than we are. Uh, all our team can't be here this summer because of uh, financial uh, needs, and someone can't be here because of that. But they played, we played a great game. Uh, we went in uh, halftime 14-7. Uh, we came out, and uh, game changer was the kickoff return. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had two starters uh, that wasn't on that uh, kickoff return. Uh, uh, Burks, he uh, had dislocated his elbow, and uh, Katoris um, Jackson uh, was at home to a funeral. So we had two starters not on there, and it just happened to be the side that they returned it on. And then, uh, before our defense could even get on the field, we uh, threw a pick six, and we was down by uh, 14 points. Mm -hmm. A team like Tuskegee, that's just uh, too big of a, a cushion to, to give up. Okay. And outside of all those things that were a little different as far as the lopsidedness um, on the field, it was pretty balanced. I mean, the offense, we had 249 yards um, total, both rushing um, rushing for under 100, not exactly where we want to be with that, with 89 and, and passing for 160. Talk about the offensive performance from the Cats on, on Saturday. Well, you know, uh, I, th I thought we played a, a good game. I wish we could have been able to uh, run the ball more effectively, but we mm -hmm. weren't able to do that. Uh, but it's the turnovers. Uh, we had uh, three turnovers in, uh, in pass interceptions that really hurt us. I thought the quarterbacks could have been more patient and really used the athletic ability uh, to flush out the pocket and make some positive yards, but they didn't do that. And uh, The last play of the game was the interception, and he threw it short, and I told him, well, we should have gone to the best athlete on the team. Let's go for the hell, maybe throw it up and let him be an athlete and make the play. Uh, but we threw a short and threw an interception. My hat goes off to uh, Tuskegee because they played tight and they played uh, the first downs. They wouldn't let their linebackers drop any deeper. They stayed right there and they was waiting for us to come and they either made a big hit or they intercepted a pass. Yeah. And ultimately, like, anytime you look at the, the stat sheet at the end of the ball game, if you have six turnovers, three interceptions, and three fumbles, you expect to win the ball game. But um, like you said, that wasn't, it didn't happen, obviously, when you give up a pick six to kind of um, negate some of that. But the defense, um, you know, the Blue Depth defense played really well on Saturday. Uh, LaRon Furr leading with 13 tackles, six solos, and Stephon Harper had 10 tackles as well with five solos. You know, uh, we was concerned about their out, their offense. We thought they had a, a very potent offense. Uh, they had a quarterback that was a good athlete, and also he could throw passes. And we was very concerned with him throwing the out route. But the defense, uh, they came up and they played a very big game. You know, and they, they played well and to contain them. Uh, we had a chance to beat these guys, but we let them get away. You know, uh, they played tough, and we played tough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Coach, this was a, a measuring stick game, if you will. Um, we talked about that last week, about um, how you're going to be able to gauge your team going forward. Opening the season, the loss to Delta State, you rebounded and you won three straight. Now you, you come at me almost in the halfway point of the season. Um, where, do, where does your team stand right now in, in your eyes? Well, you know, uh, we're still motivated and we're still embracing uh, the vision of winning uh, conference championship. We, we, we see it and we know we can uh, take the East Division, uh, but we're going to have to uh, take one game at a time. Kentucky State, uh, we have them next week, mm -hmm. and they do have a very good team. I guess I'll be talking about Kentucky State later, but mm -hmm. uh, they are a good team and we have to focus on them. 
Okay. Like you said, all goals are still intact. Um, oh, yes, you know, without a doubt. You, know, you just lost that, uh, that, that one game. But um, how has practice been? How was the, I guess, um, did you get the reaction from the guys in the locker room after the game and, and later on this week in practice as far as responding to, through adversity with that loss? Um, you know, we, we talked about it directly after the game. Uh, I thought that we could have done a better job in preparing for this game. Uh, we, we didn't have our very best practice during the week. And uh, a game like this, or any game, you win the game on Tuesday and Wednesday, mm -hmm. and you don't have those uh, good days, then more than likely you won't win the game, especially against a good team. So we started off uh, Sunday uh, with some good running and uh, going to treatment. And today we had a, a good practice, and we, we will continue uh, for the rest of this week. We, we especially uh, focus in on, on the kickoff team. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we want some committed cats there. We want some guys who want to sell out and make some plays. And we just uh, drafted some of them and, and put them out there. And so we're going to have a very good kickoff return, uh, kickoff and kickoff return team. Uh, those areas we have to really, really improve on. Yeah, and that's one of the things, you know, um, special teams is definitely indeed special. It's one of those things, I guess, um, um, it's almost like the free throw in, in basketball. It's one of the lost arts where a lot of the guys think they can make better names for themselves on offense and defense. But how important is that to, to have a sp strong special team play? Well, special teams is just as important as offense and defense. Mm -hmm. And the games we lost, <laughs> yeah, special teams had a lot to do with it. Games we won, you know, we had a lot to do with it. I think we're very fortunate to have a specialist, uh, like Juan Sonner. Uh, he can, he can, he's a really good kicker, and he can place the ball where we want him to place. We just need to get people down there and make tackles. We can't give up the field position, and we need to uh, have Kentucky State have a long field to travel. You know, we don't need to shorten the field at all. Okay, and we're returning back home. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the break, but we're returning. Back home this week, um, what do you need to see from your guys coming up this week? We need to uh, continue to improve on, on defense. I'm quite sure we will. Uh, we will have an addition of uh, Bernard Little. Uh, we'll be, be back for the Kentucky State game. That's I think big. He would bring, uh, he, he'll bring back uh, some excitement. And also, these young guys, they got some good playing experience. So with him in the rotation, I think it'd be pretty potent. Uh, so we're looking forward to that also. We're also going to try some uh, guys who uh, we think are very good pass rushers. We're going to get them uh, out there in situations like third and long and let them go and get the, the, the quarterback. Uh, and Justin uh, Ray, we think he can go out and, and be a really good rusher for us. All right. Thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm. That's the summary of Tuskegee last week. We're moving on. Stay with us. What is Fort Valley State University? It's more than students more than faculty, it's more than brick and mortar buildings or a sports team or a mascot. Fort Valley State University is belief in a dream and the promise of education and the ability to overcome adversity. Fort Valley State is believing in your own potential and knowing that your contributions on this earth make a difference. Fort Valley is opening your mind to new possibilities and embracing a world of change without fear. What is Fort Valley State University? It's not living in the past or being content with the present. It's all of us working together to be better tomorrow than we are today. We are strong. We are proud. We are determined. We are Fort Valley State University. Redshirt senior from McDonough, uh, Eagles Landing. Talk to us a little bit about your play last week. You had six tackles, five solos, and one tackle for loss, one interception, and one pass break. Quite the busy day against Tuskegee. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, my defensive back coaches have put me in a position to where I'll make, be able to make plays on the field. Mm -hmm. I feel it's my, my, it's my duty to make plays. So I just come out and with the interception, I mean, They've been telling us that they were going to get in that set all week, mm -hmm. telling us what we were going to check to, and they came out the first drive and did it. Okay. So it was lovely. Every week you guys can seem to continue to get better and better as a defense. Um, a lot of times they say that offenses take a little longer to gel. How has the defense been gelling since um, week one? Um, 
through our senior captain, uh, Stefan Harper. Stefan Harper, I mean, it's he's really been pulling the defense together, not only as as teammates, but as a family. Like, he'll stop us at the practice every day. He'll come up to us whenever he sees us on campus or anything like that. Anything just to get the family vibe around. Mm -hmm. And from what I've heard about the past and how it is now, we're much closer as a defense this year uh, than we were in the past. So it's definitely been helping out. That's been showing on the field. Okay. Now, you just transferred from, from the University of Massachusetts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Talk about that transition um, to an HBCU and how that experience has been for you um, being a part of this um, SIAC conference. Um, well, coming down from UMass, it was definitely uh, different. I mean, the weather. Yeah, <laughs> definitely weather. I mean, you know, I think up there it's probably like 40 degrees yeah. right now. So, but um, at coming to an HBCU is much more family oriented. I feel like everybody's so closer. Like I can walk around campus and people will notice that I'm on the football team and have like stuff to say, I'm, like positive about it, and uh, feels like everything. Everything is just a. A good positive energy, mm -hmm. and uh, definitely love, definitely love it about uh, being here at Fort Valley State. Okay. Well, last week you guys are coming off of six turnovers out of defense. You got to be proud of that. Um, how are you going to use that um, to to transfer over, over to this week as you face Kentucky State? Well, going into every week, Coach always preaches if we have three turnovers, then we have a chance of winning the game. Uh, we have uh, a chart set up with our goals, and every week there's also there's always get a turnover, set up a score. And this week, we got a lot, we got a lot of turnovers, and I wanna say we set up two scores and mm -hmm. actually scored one ourselves. Okay. So um, turnovers, they, they definitely give the team confidence, they definitely let the guys know that we can make plays, even if you're a freshman, you're a sophomore, junior, okay. senior, no matter what year you are, you can make plays. So, and uh, all these, what the turnovers that we've been getting have definitely been helping our confidence and also sending a message around the league, so. Okay. Great. Well, we hope that momentum moves on to Saturday as they take on the Kentucky State Thoroughbred at New Wildcat Stadium. We'll be back. Being a Wildcat takes courage. Fear is not an option on the field. Being a Wildcat takes belief. Doubt has no room under a helmet. Being a Wildcat takes dedication. The goal is to bring home a championship to our FVSU family. It's been a long time coming, but the time is here. The team is focused, excited, and ready to get this season started to show just how good we are. Season tickets are on sale now at WildcatTicketOffice.com. Welcome back, Wildcats. I'm sitting here with Andrew Campbell, a defensive back from Seattle, Washington. And um, we have a little correlation with Seattle, Washington. Um, look, Ricardo Lockett is out there with the Seahawks. Um, did you follow the Seahawks growing up? Yeah. Is that one of your teams that you, you're kind of? Uh, yeah, diehard Hawks fan. Okay, good, good. Well, hopefully we can get some of that, that Lockett luck and that Seattle luck. They're playing really well this season. Talk to us a little bit about your influence on uh, the defensive side of ball. Um, how have things been going this season so far? Um, defense is doing pretty well. We, we playing together as a team. And it seems like every game we face adversity, whether it's from being down at half or being up, we always find a way to play together. And you know, you would think as this being my third team, being on, you know, I, I would, you know, become a leader, but there's already leaders on the team that okay. lead us in the right direction. Okay. Last week you're coming off of two tackles and a, a pass breakup. You guys had a great defensive um, showing in Tuskegee, you know, causing six turnovers. Um, talk about the momentum that you hope to bring from, from last week onto this week um, for another big conference matchup. Uh, we're going to bring it. Defense, we, we bring it every game. Mm -hmm. We fly to the ball. We play fast. We play physical. You know, we're going to keep playing together and hopefully win. Okay. Now, how excited are you guys? I mean, obviously, last week wasn't the result that you want, you, you wanted, but um, your, your goals are still in, intact. If you guys, you know, run the table, you have a chance to um, to compete for the championship in, in mid-November. Um, how are you guys in the locker room um, as far as your confidence still remaining the same? Uh, the locker room's fine. Uh, we we really think in our hearts we can win. <laughs> we really think we was the better team. Okay. We still think we are the better team, even with the loss, and we think we're going to win. We're going to win conference. Okay. Now, Coach talked about um, they have a big bruising back from Kentucky State. What have you seen on film from this guy? He's big. <laughs> <laughs> he can run, but we can run too. Okay. 
And how, how, I guess you get a lot of you get the chance to see a lot of that. You guys have a stable of running backs yourself um, that you guys get to see during um, team, I'm sure, in scrimmages during practice. Um, how how are those guys preparing you for for Saturday? They prepare us well. Um, defense, scout, offense. They they come at us hard. They compete every day, just like we do. We prepare as they prepare. Okay. All right. Well, Saturday at 2 o'clock at New Wildcat Stadium, the Kentucky State Thoroughbred are coming to town, and Andrew Campbell is going to be there ready to uh, lace it up and go after him, right? I'll be ready. All right. That's it. Um, stay with us. What is Fort Valley State University? It's more than students, more than faculty. It's more than brick and mortar buildings or a sports team or a mascot. Fort Valley State University is belief in a dream and the promise of education and the ability to overcome adversity. Fort Valley State is believing in your own potential and knowing that your contributions on this earth make a difference. Fort Valley is opening your mind to new possibilities and embracing a world of change without fear. What is Fort Valley State University? It's not living in the past or being content with the present. It's all of us working together to be better tomorrow than we are today. We are strong. We are proud. We are determined. We are Fort Valley State University. Welcome back, Wildcat fans. I'm Marvin James, and we are here with Roger Fleming, the head athletic trainer here at Fort Valley State. Sir, you are probably one of the most important people here that people don't really know your name necessarily, but um, talk about what you have to do every day to, um, to keep things going. Well, every day is a, it's a new day. Mm -hmm. It's repetitive, but as the guys can attest, we have our early morning practices, so we're there at 5.15 in the morning, ready to tape them up, mm -hmm. um, take care of any unknown overnight injuries that pop up. Um, we're getting them ready for the, get, having to get ready for the water, to field set up. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the guys, you know, teaching them how, how to stretch. Right. Because um, I'm only one person, so I can't stretch the entire squad, right, so right. I'm better suited to teach them how to stretch. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, during the course of the day, after practice, I go straight to the training room. We start treatment therapy, um, making doctor's appointments, doc doctor referrals, okay. uh, taking care of insurance information. Mm -hmm. um, then I'll. So you're getting all those things that are extremely important. Absolutely, absolutely. From the uh, from the team perspective to the entire athletic department right. perspective. Um, like I said, I, I don't just deal with the football. I'm, I'm in charge of all the sports right. for the medical coverage. So uh, we're working on trying to input preventative measures mm -hmm. so these student athletes won't miss time. And if they do miss time, mm -hmm. we're trying to minimize it. Right. Right. One of the things, um, uh, we don't really have a whole lot of time to get into mm -hmm. it, but the different topics you have to deal with, the heat, obviously, and, and the new concussion um, deals with that. How important is it for you to uh, communicate to your student athletes the difference between playing hurt and being injured? And so that, they're, that way they can get the, the maximum time that they need to get, to get back onto the playing um, competition. Oh, it's extremely important. Um, and I have to go to, I mean, one player, player A may pick it up instantly, mm -hmm. and player B may, I may have to go to extensive, pull out research and, and such to help them mm -hmm. learn there's a difference between playing hurt and playing injured. Okay. And what we have to go through to get them back on the field as safely and as quickly as possible. Okay. Well, we're glad to have Roger Fleming here on the campus of Fort Valley State. We hope we don't have to see you too much <laughs> out there on the field because we know what that means. But if we're you glad don't to see have me. Then, then everything's going good. That's right. Absolutely. Well, good to have you. Well, we'll be back with more. I love my FBSU because it makes me feel at home. It's the only school that gave me a chance. I love it because of the diversity 
young students? I love my FBSU because they recognize my skills in the football field. I am FBSU. 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 FBSU. His uh, father, Vernon Dean, and uh, defensive line coach, uh, Frank Turner, all three of those guys supported his staff, and uh, they rubbed me the wrong way. They, we went up to the Kentucky State and they beat us, you know, and, mm -hmm. and talked about us. Uh, so uh, we looking forward to returning the favor. I usually don't talk any tough uh, stories. Uh -huh. I'm talking tough today. Uh oh. Yeah, we gonna we gonna we gonna beat them and we gonna beat them soundly. All right, a little personal right there. I like well, it's that. Very personal because if we lose this game, we're gonna be in trouble. Okay. So we need to uh, stay in the race for conference, and this game's a very big game, and I feel confident that it's gonna be a hard fought game. Mm -hmm. But I think our, our guys are up for the fight, and we need to uh, be ready for a tough one because they're a good team, they'll be a well coached team, and they know all our secrets, and they're gonna be coming at us with with all barrels loaded. So we're gonna have to. Uh, be able to match their energy and overcome everything they send towards us. All right. Now this is the 28th matchup. Um, Fort Valley leads the series 19 to 8. Last year we lost 17 to 11. Um, Kentucky State is coming off a win over Central State, 31-24. Talk about the matchups with this game offensively. What what can we expect out of Thoroughbred? You know they have a very good defense. As a matter of fact, they have the same uh, defense that uh, we run. We can run the same scheme. Mm -hmm. uh, they run eight-man front, and they have mix it up with uh, man coverage and uh, cover two and cover three, and they, they do a very good job. Last year they got us with the blitz, uh, and I'm, I'm quite sure you're going to bring a lot of blitz this year. Uh, offensively, they want to run the ball. They have a very big back, and they're going to run inside zone, outside zone at us and they're gonna have two tight ends and try to try to smash us really and come along with some bootleg and play action. So that's what they do and uh, it's, gonna be a, it's gonna be a really good match. Is it an opportunity for Otis to um, exploit them in some kind of way or, or with um, Edie doing some things um, at the quarterback position? Uh, well, with those guys, they always can open up and make big plays. Uh, matter of fact, I'm, I'm Saying the same thing Buddy Ryan used to say back in the day when he had Randall Cunningham. Okay. Uh, he would tell Randall, I want you to make three big plays. And that's the way to, with, with Otis. You know, he's going to want to make three big plays anyway. Right. So I'm just going to tell him, make three. But don't try to give the game away making big plays. Mm -hmm. he, he has that in him. And uh, he can make big plays. And we want at least three from him a game. Okay. All right. Defensively, um, what can we expect? It looks like they average 100 and uh, just under 200 yards a game. Um, Looks like they, they, they pass the ball uh, quite a, a good bit, uh, 160 yards a clip. What can we um, expect to see defensively um, from the Blue Death defense? Well, their strength is their run game, okay. and especially with having that big back. Uh, we're going to have to be able to contend with him, mm -hmm. and then they will sneak an unbalanced line in there with four offensive line to one side, and we have to be aware of that when they do that and be able to match up and, and get after them. You know, But if we can, if we can contain the rush, the rush game, uh, we'd be okay. They didn't get a run game until uh, this last pass game, and they improved significantly. So we're gonna have to slow them down. Uh, their offense has been a weak spot. They play really good defense, but we're gonna have to contain their offense, and hopefully our offense can uh, score some points. We get ahead. Mm -hmm. and we can make them have to pass the ball, and we can put some heat on. Okay, and then we're turning back home to New Wildcat Stadium. Um, how excited are you guys to, to continue that tradition of the Wildcat Walk and to really get things, um, you know, need the, the crowd support behind you as you go on to this conference game again? Well, you know, the Wildcat Walk improved significantly. Uh, last, last time we walked, we went from two people to about 80 people. Uh, so it's improving every week. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Leron Furr is a communication major in He's going to have like a Today Show, you know, like they have on ESPN. Okay, on yeah, the college game day. We, mm -hmm. we hope to okay. grow into that where he can have uh, these people here who work with him as students be a mm -hmm. part of it and he get that going. I think that'd be a great idea. Okay. And what the, uh, is this a day game? What time is the kickoff on Saturday? Uh, it's at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock? Yes. We You're not a fan of those uh, early games. It's okay now. It's okay. It's down quite a bit. We, <laughs> We was looking forward to uh, Tuskegee being hot. We went there 70 degrees. Yes, sir. Where's the heat? <laughs> we trained for this. But uh, 
Uh, it's a nice day. Maybe the fans can get out there and enjoy the weather and the game. And so it's, it's okay. It'll be good for us. Okay. All right, Coach. Well, like the hay is in the barn, we have a, a, another day of practice before we get ready and prepare for Kentucky State. But it should be a great matchup at New Wildcat Stadium this Saturday at 2 o'clock. And it should be great weather per coach. Thanks for watching the show. We hope to see you soon on the sidelines. Have a great week.